you're not alone. A lot of people feel like they're not good enough or that they're pretending to be something that they're not. In this video, I'm going to show you how to overcome imposter syndrome and start living a life that's true to yourself. Hey there, my name is Maria, and if you're watching this video, then the chances are that you've been struggling with imposter syndrome. But you're not alone in this feeling. In fact, it's something that a lot of people deal with on a daily basis. But don't worry, because I'm here to help. In this video, I'm going to show you how to overcome imposter syndrome and finally start living the life that you want to live. This topic is structured in two parts. First, I will dive deeper into how imposter syndrome happens, the root causes of it, and what you can do to deal with it. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I'm going to walk you through a mini workshop that I've held multiple times within my current company that you could do at home in just 10 minutes to overcome imposter syndrome a little bit more and boost your confidence. Imposter syndrome is a feeling that you're not as competent or capable as others perceive you to be. This can make you feel like you're self-doubting yourself and increase a lack of confidence in your abilities, even when you have achieved success before. Imposter syndrome is a very common experience. It also happened to me when I started at my current job. And to be honest, it still shows up every now and then whenever I start working in a new field, in a new team or something that I have little experience in. But now I'm also fully aware that it can hold me back from reaching my full potential. The good news is that there are strategies for overcoming imposter syndrome. And by understanding the root causes and learning how to recognize and challenge those negative patterns, you can develop a greater self-confidence and achieve success. Let's start with the root causes of imposter syndrome. It's important to understand that imposter syndrome is not a personal flaw or deficiency, but rather a set of thoughts and beliefs that can be changed. For example, when I started as an intern in Big Tech, I thought they hired me by accident. I went to a very small and very unknown university in Germany that most people have never heard of. I didn't work at any big name tech company before, so why would they hire me? I was just waiting for them to figure out that I shouldn't be there. But now, years later, I understand that they didn't only hire me because of my academic achievements, but also because of some personal projects that I've worked on at the time and initiatives that I was leading that had nothing to do with my university degree. One root cause of imposter syndrome is also the societal and cultural messages we receive about success and achievement. We may feel pressure to meet certain standards or expectations and may compare ourselves to others, which will lead to feelings of inadequacy. For example, in my internship, I was comparing myself to all the other interns in my class, but they went to Ivy League schools, so I felt like I didn't belong there. Another root cause is the way we think about ourselves and our abilities. Negative thought patterns such as perfectionism or self-doubt can actually contribute to imposter syndrome. We may focus on our mistakes or downplay our achievements, leading to feeling of fraudulence. For me, I'm definitely a perfectionist at time and I want to get there, I want to have the best job ever, I want to have the best team ever, I want to have the best role ever, but often that's hurting me more than it's helping me. Finally, our past experiences can also play a role in the development of imposter syndrome. If we have faced criticism or failure in the past, we may internalize these experiences and believe that we are not capable of success. I, for example, was rejected many times from big tech companies and with this experience, it made me feel even more so that I was a false positive in this situation. However, you can do something against it because when you understand imposter syndrome and the root causes, you can really develop a strategy to overcome it. Because remember, imposter syndrome is not a personal flaw and it's possible to change our thoughts and beliefs with effort and time. Another example for me when I was an intern was when I had no idea how to deal with the source control environment of my company. And the feelings of, I shouldn't be here, really became big for me at that time. But to overcome it, it's really critical to recognize these thought patterns. And one technique that can be helpful here is reframing, which involves changing the way you think about a situation. For example, instead of thinking, I can't do something, you can try reframing the thought to, I may not be able to do this perfectly now, but I can learn and improve in the future. Another technique is evidence gathering, which involves seeking out and collecting evidence that contradicts your negative thought patterns. For example, if you think I'm not good enough, you can gather evidence of your accomplishments and successes to change that belief. For me, that was reminding myself of some tough projects that I've worked on before and that I was really proud of. And by recognizing and challenging negative thought patterns, you can start to shift your thinking and develop greater self-confidence. Because remember, it takes time and effort, but it's totally possible to overcome it. 
Another key strategy of overcoming imposter syndrome is seeking support from others. You can share this with your manager, you can share it with your mentor or friends, but I'm here to tell you right now that you are not alone. Everyone feels it. Imagine young founders like Mark Zuckerberg. Do you think he was fully believing that he can do the job and lead other people when he was 19 years old? And in addition to seeking support, it's also important to find accountability through setting goals and seeking feedback from others. This can help you track your progress and stay motivated, and it can also provide a sense of accountability and help you stay on track. What I did for myself, and I can highly recommend for you to do the same, I started a positive feedback document for myself where I basically wrote down all the positive feedback quotes from coworkers over the years, grouped by area or skill. And whenever I have a feeling of imposter syndrome, I go back to this feedback document and read it until I feel better about myself. I really recommend starting one of those documents for yourself because whenever I look at this document, even just for fun, even if I have no feeling of imposter syndrome, you see how other people value you and you actually feel better and more motivated about yourself. In conclusion, imposter syndrome is a common experience that can hold us back a lot from reaching our full potential. However, there are certain strategies for overcoming imposter syndrome, including understanding the root causes, recognizing and challenging negative thought patterns, practicing self-compassion and self-acceptance, and seeking support and accountability. As a viewer, you can take action by implementing those strategies in your own life by clicking on this video for a full workshop about imposter syndrome that I created for my company. And I'm gonna share it with you now because I think it's so critical. So thank you for watching and I hope that these strategies will actually help you to overcome imposter syndrome. Because remember, you have the skills and abilities and resilience to overcome imposter syndrome. So don't hold yourself back with this. You got this.